They're yes. like, oh, look, I've got miners that used to be worth a lot, but then I tried to play games and now they're worth quite little. And <clears throat> the same thing applies for proof of stake. Hey, you've got this massive stake in a thing. Why don't you shoot your investment in the head by doing stupid stuff? No one does yeah. it. Yeah. It's just so it's never like a happens. benevolent a benevolent whale <clears throat> type of Well, I mean, if you if you believe what is commonly said in startups and open source software is that a benevolent dictator is the most efficient form of governance. Yeah. And, you know, you, you kind of look at that and you're like look at the Bitcoin code. All of the commits are like two guys. It's like <laughs> you're like okay. You know, and, and there's just so many, there's so many things I know that nobody else knows. This is crazy. I wish, I wish I had a larger audience because it could make the world so much smarter. You want to know it wasn't in the Bitcoin white paper, the inflation what? rate, the halfening of the interest every four years, those things aren't in there. The block size limit, none of those things are in there. <laughs> You're like, okay, that's pretty funny because those are really important parameters, right? Like the inflation rate and the fact that it would cut in half every four years might be something you might want to chuck in ye old white paper. <laughs> Bitcoin also has no written spec. So if you want to write a client for it, screw yourself. You're just like, good luck being bug for bug compatible with the C plus plus version that originally only ran on windows and had a poker client in it. <laughs> There's so much stuff I know nobody else knows. It's hilarious. So you, we have this design, what's to stop a competitor for doing something similar um, which product? Is it because with, with, with something like hex, like why, why is hex like, well, let's, go, let's go over that. Did, did hex where, no, I mean, to, to clarify for the audience, he's referring to the Lindy effect, which states that the longer something has existed, the longer it is likely to exist. But notice that that Lindy effect argument doesn't speak to market price. So you, you right. know, pencils have been around a long time, but you really wouldn't have <laughs> That's been a, fair. You wouldn't Thanks have for the clarification. A, a pencil yeah, that was history. needed. No. Yeah. So, and, and I mean, we could, if we're going to play the like analyze laws game, we can get into Metcalf's law. You know, the value of one fax machine is nothing. The value of like a hundred fax machines is a hundred squared. So, so as, as you can communicate with more people, communication networks become more valuable, but, it, but in reality is the main utility of these networks communication or is it speculation? It's primarily speculation. So right, it operates for sure. differently. So, you know, what are some other funny laws we could put in there? Uh, what's the one where the good money drives out the bad? Gresham's law. Gresham's law. Yeah, that one's always misquoted. Gresham's law requires that there be an artificial peg and that people just decide to route around that stupid peg and keep the good money and spend the bad money. But there is no artificial peg to be dealing with here. So it's just, it's just an irrelevant non sequitur. But, you know, people bring it up all the time. Maybe one because we have famous. I think he's a is he hexagon. Yeah, P is for pulse. Maybe maybe famous can answer this. Why is hex not trying to build an Ethereum L two? Um, uh, because well, hex doesn't have a team specifically, right? So there's no one that could do anything. The code is immutable. Nothing's being done to it since the day it's launched. Okay, but, okay. But the thing is, is yeah, that yeah, we but are. What about we, we are. We're just creating a thing called pulse chain. So at the pulse chain, pulse chain is not an L two, no, right? It's an L1. Pulse chain. It's an L one, but. No, one. Right. But I, I, I think that the, the question is really at the end of the day is like, well, what's happening with our L1? So if we look at the Ethereum W and Ethereum Fair, what they did, not what they are, what they did. Right. So the system state copied the whole thing and gave everyone exactly what they had on the other side. That reduces the problems in which we've seen before in other EVM chain splits, such as Binance, such as AVAX, such as other things where Phantom and so on and so forth, where you had to bridge in the asset in order to give value to the system now we have this certain um the coins are already on the other side so there's no need to bridge over something to give it value what you need to do is create ratios on the other side and then you can have this sort of work in between uh let's say as an example ethereum and pulse chain well you could bring in assets either way usually we're used to taking what's valuable and bringing it to the other side to make the other side valuable but now in this situation which has never been done before is what if you could take what's not valuable at first and bring it to where it's valuable and then pair it so it creates a value and then there you have a ratio dependent on what is worth something and then the whole ecosystem can generate a value due to certain ratios so the oracles are necessary okay. in order to, to literally talk to certain off-chain demands. But on-chain, the ratios are king, in my opinion. The oracles are not really needed. 
Yeah, but, but, but that still doesn't answer my question of why Pulse Chain is its own L1 rather than L2, because I think it makes more sense to be an L2, because if you're an L1, you have to rely on these bridges, right? And they're not secure. It's not possible to make a really but, but, cryptographic. But that's where you're wrong. Bridge. You don't have to rely on the bridges because everything's already on the other side. We're so used to having these bridges because there's nothing on the other side. Someone creates a brand new L1 with nothing there. And it's like, well, hey, bring your coins over so you could do something with it on the other side. That's nonsense because then you're creating this whole, like you said, risk where bridges, like I agree, are the one of the main causes for m most of the hacks. And 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 it doesn't create, you know, it creates this like, like, oh, well, what happens to the funds if the people leave? But the thing is, is that with Pulse Chain and the way that certain things are being done now, where the system state gets copied fully, you have already your coins on the other side. It's not that they're not valuable. It's just that, okay, well, what's the ratio between this and that? Now, you can bridge over certain, yeah, yeah, yeah. certain coins, I mean, but you don't need to yeah. bridge over in a quantity to make it worth you just have to bridge over some yeah right i mean you can you can you can do that right you can have a copy but, of but you can't do that on, on you can't do right. that on evax on phantom on the already existing yeah, yeah, yeah. that's why right. people look at it like oh, yeah. it might not work but when they understand that 100% of all the coins that already exist are going to be on the other side in the key holder's hands, right? So if you own the keys to that wallet that owns whatever, the Link or, or the Aave or the Ethereum even, because the Ethereum turns into Pulse, you actually have those keys on the other side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there are some problems with this. Like, ETH is not actually properly decentralized. It still has... A huge reliance on uh, centralized stable coins like USDC. So most likely the USDC token that's over on the chain side is going to be, it's probably not going to be worth literally zero, but it's going to be worth very close to zero because USDC will say we will not honor uh, redemptions from Pulse Chain. We'll only because otherwise, like I, look, I agree it, with you. I agree it, with you. But for, for right, me, the I mean, only that, that important thing is yeah. that will the exchanges give uh, use Pulse, right? And I think they will. Well, I think I mean, the exchanges will use Pulse because one, they'll have already some yeah. wrong with it, so they can make money. But the beauty, I mean, they. I, but the beauty I mean, in they, it is they, that they all exchanges, right? All exchanges own all your crypto. Anyone who has crypto on an exchange, they own it because they have the seed phrases to all the wallets like Binance. I know it's a real wallet, but they own the seed phrase to that. But the beauty is, is that they'll have already the coins to give you if you want to go on Pulse Chain. So there's no need for a bridge yeah. because the coins already right. exist in the hands right. of those that but, are but, producing it. Right. But, but, the, but the problem is because Ethereum still has these centralized stable coins, you know, all of the other stuff is, is tied up to that, right? So if you have some kind of ecosystem on ethereum like uniswap or gmx or whatever if it's touching usdc then the version on pulse chain just isn't going to be the same because it's going to be touching a fake usdc that's actually worth zero um and, you know i mean like this this i mean i think there is some i think there's something certainly interesting 100 percent. The, the ratio will have a problem at the beginning but people yeah. can't tell us that it's well, worthless because well what happened with ETW? people went in and out yes there wasn't a high liquidity because not everyone used it but if someone's going to tell us that it's going to be worthless not really yeah you're right the usdc the usdt those coins are going to be whatever Ever, but that's due to the ratio only simply due to the ratio but yeah. if we fix that ratio you there could be a certain je ne sais pas quoi well, that nobody's nobody's for you know so like people you can't say it won't happen because this has never been done before, nobody's right? okay nobody is going to pay one real usdt for a fake usdt right like that's not going to happen the, the, um, we just find an infinite money glitch yeah yeah right infinite money glitch but, but clone each state like, 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 like okay, clone in seven yeah. times you got seven times you guys, point, so you got guys infinite money that your, <laughs> your usdc coins your stable coins are not that stable even on ethereum they're right. they're most of them they're are stable okay. most of them are have problems with their the way that they're back you know yeah 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 but like but okay, maybe you could say that for Tether, but you certainly couldn't say it for USDC or USDP. I mean, it's actually quite interesting. What would happen to Tether on Pulse? Well, I can a actually lot of people... say that because if you go look at the liquidity between USDT and USDC, it's not one for one. There's there's still a percentage of one being worth more than the other. When I when I hold something, uh, okay. it, the USDC is not one to one. It's a ratio. People okay, but still haven't understood. The question is, where is it pegged? No, but crypto is. And what does that mean? Yeah, I, I, no I, yeah, I, I mean, crypto. I mean, look, it's literally look, a ratio, look. and then the ratio when you trade yeah. in between no. it creates a different ratio. So the stable coins are not that stable. <clears throat> right. But, no, no, but, no. But you can redeem. 
But yeah, I, I, can anything anything I, I can redeem anything I want. I can redeem anything I want. No, you can't. I don't understand what, where <laughs> no, that you comes can't. in. I could redeem my ETH. I could redeem my uh, my BNB. I could redeem my... <laughs> you can't. You can't. You, no, okay. you can't. What do you mean? Okay, so you okay, guys okay, are saying just, I can't let's... cash out any of my crypto. I can only cash no, out... No, no. What I mean is you can take USDT to Tether and get $1 per Tether coin. You can get that. That's what I mean by redeeming. So if you had your Actually, pulse no, chain you cannot, and you had 100... You cannot, because if you, you go look at the ratio of how much USDT and USDC are worth, you're actually not getting one for one. You're not. When you go trade it on an exchange and you if say, you okay, take I want to take my USDT and put it in US, USD, right? If I go on my Binance and I say, I want USDC and I want it in USD, I'm not going to get the same amount. Yeah. I'm going to get whatever the ratio is between them. Yeah, okay, yeah, but that's yeah. on I, the I, local I, exchange. Yeah, I don't care but about I mean, one exchange. You, I'm if, talking if about you, the biggest if, exchange if, in crypto, yeah, okay, and that doesn't okay, work like okay, that but, because the coins okay. are not actually one dollar. It's supposed right, but but fa famous. Let me, yeah, yeah let, let, let me let me just explain this for everyone's benefit. Um, but so basically, the the way stable coins like Tether and USDC work is the organizations that mint those are supposed to back them with real dollars in a bank account or US government bonds, treasuries, like T-bills, right? So if you have a million dollars worth of the Tether token, you can take that Tether token to Tether, or if you have a million USDC tokens, you can take those tokens to Circle, and they will deposit, they will burn those tokens and deposit real dollars into your bank account. Now, if you do something like Pulse Chain, and you just copy the whole thing over, then you're not going to be able to redeem those centralized stablecoins with their issuers. Exactly. So, so they're going to trade for basically zero, right? Nobody's going to pay you for an unredeemable fake USDC, right? So it's going to trade at zero, or pretty close to zero, right? Um, now, I do think there's something interesting here, but I still don't think it quite... Well, maybe it does sort of answer my question, because maybe the plan with uh, with Pulse Chain is to sort of copy the value on Ethereum and then have a different ecosystem where all the same stuff exists and you don't have we're to copying the ratios. spend the money. We're copying the ratios, and then there's also Teller, uh, Treller, sorry. That's uh, an Oracle that is coming and working in with one of the... Uh, I don't know if uh, Sloth had mentioned that, but they're actually working with one of the uh, stablecoin providers that are being created on that. But even at that, the way I look at it is like, how many people actually go and claim their USDC with USDC? Which central? Right. It so, doesn't work like so that. It, it, it's that, that, that. Most people don't. Most people don't. I would say 99% of people don't. In crypto. Well, I, I, think, I think, in fact, with Tether, you actually can't because Tether will only allow certain um, approved organizations to do redemptions. But with other stable coins like USDP, anyone can do it. So with USDP, you can create an account on Paxos, put in your bank details, and you can literally um, re redeem your USDP and have the money go straight to your bank. But I don't think it's a one-to-one, so, one, though. I think it's really the... It is a, it is a one to one It is a one-to-one. One one. With, pa with Paxos, with USDP, for one USDP token, you get $1 in your bank account. Uh, hey, guys, could I just yeah. jump in real quick and try to... Oh, yeah, sure. 